happened in 2002, didn't it? Britney and Justin split up, Halle Berry made that really long speech at the Oscars, and Kelly Rowland tried to text Nelly using Microsoft Excel and then got mad when he didn't respond. It was also a year that gave us tons of fantastic video games, and regardless of your genre of choice, there was sure to be something that kept a smile on that face all year long. For this list, we've trawled through the archives of both Metacritic and game rankings to bring you the shiniest stars of the year 2002. In order to qualify, a game must have received at least seven professional reviews and must have been released in at least one territory in the year in question. For the sake of transparency, there were a number of ports released in 2002 that technically should be among the top 10, as they fit the criteria, but since they'll be covered in lists from the original year of release, we've decided to exclude them. I'm Ashton from Triple Jump and here are the 10 best games of 2002. Number 10, Super Mario Sunshine, GameCube, 92%. You've got to feel a bit for Mario. The poor bloke can't even go on holiday with his mates without something or other happening. For his 2002 outing, Mario, Peach and several of the Toads all went to the Isle Delfino for a relaxing vacation. Upon arrival though, everyone's favourite plumber finds himself in a spot of bother with the local authorities, who accuse him of vandalising the island. Following one of the most unfair trials we've ever seen, Mario is forced to clean up the island using the flash liquidizer ultra dousing device. Do we need to call someone? One. Seems like a human rights violation, no? Put simply, Super Mario Sunshine was a triumph of a game, giving players what they enjoyed about Super Mario 64 but with several hot and fresh ideas. Critics were particularly impressed by the graphics, level design, music puzzles, and the introduction of the Flood, which was a welcome addition to the gameplay mechanics that they knew and loved. Some did level criticism at the game's camera system, but if you were able to look past that, Super Mario Sunshine was a heck of a lot of fun even with the flagrant disregard for human rights. Number 9, Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem, GameCube, 92%. Here at Team Triple Jump, we just love the Spookums, and we were delighted to find that Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem, a title that often gets overlooked when it comes to discussions around horror games, ranked among the very best of 2002. Eternal Darkness follows Alexandra Royvers as she returns to her family estate in the year 2000, following the murder of her grandfather. With the police getting nowhere, she decides to take it upon herself to look for clues, and stumbles upon the Tome of Eternal Darkness, which opens up a whole can of worms. The game released a pretty much universal critical acclaim, garnering praise for its story, graphics, and in particular, its ability to scare the absolute plops out of players. You see, unlike most other horror titles, Eternal Darkness messed not only with the character within the game, but also with the player themselves, putting fear into them by playing such pranks as threatening to delete their save data and flashing up bogus fatal exceptions. Sadly, Eternal Darkness didn't sell particularly well, and so has never gotten a sequel to despite the best efforts of director Dennis Dyack. Still with nothing if not optimistic, so we'll keep holding our breaths for a follow-up to this spooky masterpiece. Number 8, NFL 2K3, PlayStation 2, 93%. If you were a fan of American football in the early 2000s, then it's fair to say there was a veritable smorgasbord of titles that allowed you to experience the sport without having to wear a ton of protective gear or get your bum slapped by an overly handsy teammate. Among the best football games around were those of the NFL 2K franchise, a short-lived but competent series that was Sega's answer to EA's Madden titles. Upon its release in 2002, NFL 2K3 wowed players, bringing them a football experience unlike anything else they'd seen thus far. The game retained the mechanics of the previous NFL 2K titles while adding a whole bunch of new features. The team roster had gotten a refresh, stadiums were redesigned, and the franchise mode was introduced, which allowed players to get involved with scouting, signing, and trading. Although NFL 2K3 didn't attain quite as high a score as 2002's Madden offering, critics still found a lot of stuff to love. The graphics were crisp, the controls were responsive, and the gameplay, although somewhat complex, was a great deal of fun. And in fact, Fairness, the complexity was more on the sport itself than the game. For those who were into football, choosing between NFL 2K3 and Madden NFL 2003 really was a tough decision. Number 7, Warcraft 3, Reign of Chaos, PC, 93.02%. Long before World of Warcraft was delighting PC gamers all around the, uh, 
world, the Warcraft series was letting players live out their high fantasy dreams real-time strategy style. Set several years after Warcraft 2, Warcraft 3 Reign of Chaos puts players in charge of one of the four factions as the Burning Legion attempts to take over Azeroth with an army of the undead. In order to counter the threat, the Human Alliance, Orcish Horde and the Night Elves must band together and counter the Legion before they get a chance to corrupt the World Tree. When it comes to Warcraft 3's critical reception, there was little fault the reviewers could find. The story and the world had both been carefully crafted, fleshing out the narrative of the first two games. The design was top notch and the soundtrack was atmospheric and gelled perfectly with the action on screen. If you were after a fantasy RTS title, then Warcraft 3 had everything you could have wanted and much, much more. Unfortunately, the original is no longer playable thanks to Warcraft 3 Reforged, which forced players to update to the new, and on all accounts inferior, remaster. RIP Warcraft 3 Reign of Chaos, you may be gone, but you shall never be forgotten. Number 6. Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Xbox 93% Here's a fun fact for you. There have been no less than 40 video games released under the name of American novelist Tom Clancy, which, considering the first was only released in 1998, means that, on average, gamers haven't had to go more than six months without their Clancy fix. One of the best is 2002's Splinter Cell, a game that remains the second highest scoring of the franchise after Splinter Cell Chaos Theory, which obviously we'll come to in a later list. Inspired by titles like those in the Metal Gear series, Splinter Cell was of the stealth persuasion, and tells the story of NSA agent Sam Fisher as he investigates the disappearance of two CIA agents, and later uncovers a horrific ethnic cleansing plot in Azerbaijan, orchestrated by the Georgian president. Critics were hugely impressed by everything that was on offer, praising the game's graphics and lighting effects, its stealth mechanics, and its audio and voice work. Not only was Splinter Cell a hit with reviewers, but it also sold like hotcakes and won no less than five different awards, including the E3 2003 Game Critics Award for Best Action Adventure Game and the Game Developers' Choice Award for Excellence in Writing. Number 5. Virtua Fighter 4 PlayStation 2 94% over the years, we've played more fighting games than we can shake a stick at, and though not all of them have been winners, there have been a few that stick in our memories for all of the right reasons. Case in point, Virtua Fighter 4. The fourth main title in the Virtua Fighter series, which was originally released in arcades in 2001, saw players facing off against one another, or the computer if you had no friends, in order to obtain that all-important KO. In terms of its gameplay, Virtua Fighter 4 retained many of the mechanics that fans had grown to love, whilst refining elements like the evasion system and adding additional move types and characters. If you were looking for a straightforward fighting game that was perfectly balanced, then Virtua Fighter 4 was the game for you. It was easy enough for beginners to pick up, but deep enough to keep even the most experienced players hooked for hours on end, the graphics and animations were top notch, and the AI was on point. Some critics even went as far to call Virtua Fighter 4 the best fighting game since Street Fighter 2, which is high praise indeed. Number 4. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 PlayStation 2 94% Ladies and gentlemen and others, for the third best game of list in a row, please welcome Mr. Tony Hawk. Seriously, guys, should we be sending him a congratulatory fruit basket or something? Admittedly, the Birdman's fourth pro skater outing didn't attain quite as high a review score as its predecessors, but it was still an absolutely fantastic game. For the series' third sequel, Tony and his skater buddies returned to our consoles to allow players to trick their way around a number of different courses. The vast majority of the gameplay was retained from previous games, Though, Pro Skater 4 gave a makeover to the career mode, removing the time limits to make things feel a little bit more like free skate mode. Additionally, a number of new tricks were added, and players got to choose from one of 15 skaters, with more available to unlock after completing certain challenges, including Django Fett and Iron Maiden mascot Eddie. Pro Skater 4 went down very well with critics, who applauded the game's huge maps, increased difficulty, and online multiplayer. It truly was a credit to the series, taking everything its predecessors did and building upon it to create a skating game that was a delight to play. It's a shame the same can't be said for Pro Skater 5, but hey, we can't have everything. Number 3, Madden NFL 2003, PlayStation 2, 95%. Oh yeah, here we go, it's sports time. We've covered an American football title on a best games list before, we haven't covered one on this best games li Oh, wait. Yes, we have. 
Oh, this is awkward. Gonna give it everything I've got, I guess. Prior to the year of 2002, the Madden series had been going strong, impressing critics and players alike by capturing the essence of American football. It wasn't until the release of NFL 2003, however, that the series truly peaked, soaring to heights never attained by the franchise before or since. Well, from a critical standpoint at least. NFL 2003's gameplay was very similar to its predecessors, but still had new things to bring to the table as well. Along with improved graphics, the game boasted online multiplayer, a training camp, and a play creator that was so versatile that players could use it to make plays in pretty much any shape they wanted. As though all of that weren't enough to get players hyped for another slice of NFL action, the game came with an absolutely banging soundtrack, with songs from the likes of Bon Jovi, Andrew WK, and a good Charlotte. Oh, takes you back, doesn't it? Number two, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, PS2, 95%. When we saw that Grand Theft Auto Vice City was a candidate for this list, we did a bit of a double take. Surely this masterpiece of a game couldn't possibly have been released just a year after Grand Theft Auto 3, could it? It turns out, that's exactly what happened though. Vice City's development began in early 2002 and the game was released in October of the same year, which is particularly astonishing considering just how fantastic it was. Vice City is set in the year 1986 and follows Tommy Vercetti as he's released from prison and attempts to build his his own empire by taking over the city's other criminal organisations. Despite the many controversies the game found itself embroiled in, Vice City was a critical and commercial success, achieving a review score of 95 out of 100 and shifting over 500,000 copies within its first 24 hours of release. Critics were hugely impressed by the game's open world and story, which both received praise for its depth and for giving players a sense that what they were interacting with was real. There were also a number of compliments for its complex missions, voice acting and music, which all came together to make Vice City one of the best games of 2002. And number one, Metroid Prime, GameCube. 97%. By 2002, Metroid fans were probably starting to think they'd seen the last of Samus Aran. After all, the yellow-haired bounty hunter hadn't made an appearance since 1994's Super Metroid. Clearly, Metroid games are like buses though, as players waited 8 years for a new title, then two came along at once. Indeed, Metroid Prime for the GameCube and Metroid Fusion for the Game Boy Advance released within a day of each other. But although Metroid Fusion was a solid entry in the franchise, garnering a score of 92 out of 100 on Metacritic, it was Metroid Prime that triumphed with critics. Metroid Prime takes place between Metroid and Metroid 2 and follows Samus Aran as she battles space pirates and their various biological experiments. Rather than being a side-scrolling platformer though, Metroid Prime was a 3D action adventure, a change in perspective that went down very well with players. Aside from the jump to 3D, critics enjoyed Metroid Prime's graphics, sound, level design and gameplay mechanics, which focused on exploration while still retaining the feel of Metroid games of old. So here's to you, Metroid Prime. If ever there was a sequel that was worth waiting nearly a decade for, you're certainly it.